I'm going to go with the non-welding way of making a case. It basically be two C-shaped pieces of sheet metal. I'll be using um, 16 gauge steel. This will be the front panel, top and bottom, curved around this way with um, flanges at the side. And then the back will be just a simple C-shaped piece folded around the other way. Uh, the reason to do it this way is that basically I'll be able to take the back off and everything that's attached will be attached to the front. There'll be all the instruments here and the mounting plate on the bottom and there'll be plenty of access at the back to install parts. Uh, the rest of this is the details I'm doing all the cutting and folding. I'm actually going to make the entire front first based on this. These are all inch sizes and then I'll cut the back to fit because uh, depending how I do the folding the actual dimensions of the front may be off by a tiny fraction of an inch. I'm also going to review the layout of the front after I make the box. I'm going to start with a rough layout of the front of the box. I'll just do that with Sharpie and then I'll know where to paint on some layout fluid. I don't have any spray layout fluid so I'm going to be doing it this way. And once I have the layout fluid on and dry then I can just um, use an awl to mark the proper lines. I've got the Margaret fluid put on here and dried, so now I'm going to start laying things out. I'm not going to trust the metal is square. I'm going to reference all my angles off to this side. I will measure in here just to see which way it is off square. First thing is a 3 8 inch tab. way things are really square. Actually that's pretty good. And that is wide enough because it actually only need about five inches or a little more. I might have to add more markout fluid. The next dimension is five inches. Seven inches. My first line I'm going to have to darken up again a bit more. I didn't really make it dark enough. It'll be too hard to see when I'm sawing the metal or folding it. There, that's a much, much better mark. And finally, five inches again. And another three eighths as well. I'll mark them both at the same time. Okay, so that's all the distances in that direction. And three eighths for the tab here. Because the tab on the front is going to go on the outside of the back, whereas the tabs at the top and sides are going to go inside the back. So the full lines are actually different. So this is going to be the crease line for the tab at the side. The, um, on the top and bottom, they have to be set in twice the metal thickness extra, so that's a half inch. Actually, I'm marking that back here for best accuracy. Thank you. 
I might just leave this tab extra wide rather than cutting this extra inset for the extra distance. Now the width of these panels, this wide one is going to be five inches plus twice the thickness of the metal from one crease to the other. So we five, twice the thickness, yes, five and twice the thickness of the metal. This will be five less twice the thickness of the metal. So I want five and an eighth of an inch here. So that's going to be my cut line. And now I'm going to again measure in the tabs. This tab's already marked. And these other tabs, the line is going to be so far in that I need more marking out. I was finding the die cam did not work too well. It tended not to cover very well, so I'm just going to use a Sharpie to add a little more black here. These tabs here, I'm going to want to bevel them a bit. Now, this tab and this tab are actually going to interlock like this. They're not all going to be on the same plane. So they could both be left square, but this one here I'm going to bevel it a bit just so it doesn't hit um, the front panel. And same for these tabs here. Before I cut all this, I'm going to give it a good check just to make sure it all makes sense. I've got the metal clamped down with a couple of hold downs here so it won't shift around. My cut is just off the edge of the table. And I've got some masking tape on the foot of the saw so it doesn't scratch off all my markings. This is just a regular uh, jigsaw with a fine metal cutting blade on it. And now I'm just going to make a lot of noise. I'll be cutting a bit outside the lines and I'll either be grinding or filing to get things exactly to the line. For the long cut I had the metal astride the gap in the woodworking vise here so that'll support the off cut as well as the main piece. I have everything clamped down solid again so I'll be cutting in this direction. Now that I have the rough cut I'm going to file this edge down. I'm going to still see my scratch mark and I'm just going to File it away till it's on the line. It takes a while. This is the sort of thing where I really should have my reading glasses so I can see if I'm at the line. Instead, I just use a magnifier. I can see where I'm close, see where I'm far. I can work on the far spots first. This is this spot here. It's pretty much at the line. So I don't have to file there anymore. I actually want to mark that just to avoid that spot. And this very end is also on the line. So I'm going to mark that to remind me to avoid that spot. In between, it's high. I told you in the file this way, I get more of a straight line because I'm using the file as sort of a, almost like a plane. This gets down local high spots. But overall, does not remove as much metal. So, it's probably a little early to be doing that. I could use an angle grinder for this, but I'm worried that it would cut too fast. I go past the line. Once you're past the line, there's not much you can do about it. Yeah, 
yeah, I'm okay from here back, pretty much. So this, all good. And so on until it's done. And I have to file this cut too. I got the other one done now, but this one still has to be done. And now I'm going to cut all the corners and notches. I'm getting all set to my first bend here. I have a piece of angle that's basically the length of the bend in the vise and a similar piece backing it up. I've put it in so the bend line, you probably can't see it there. There we go, a little light helps. The bend line is just showing above the angle iron. Now it doesn't really matter how much it's showing as long as it's even from end to end. I'm going to be cutting the back of this after I make the front. I can adjust the back to be the exact dimensions I need to match the front. So having this out of position will just mean the front is not quite the size I expected, but I just have to make sure I keep the edges parallel so things don't just end up looking wonky. So uh, to do the actual bend, it'll be a combination of brute force and a rubber hammer to get most of the bend, and then I'll use a solid hammer to get a sharp corner. I may need a lever for this. Yeah, I'm going to need a lever to pull on this. Now, trying to bend this by hand really didn't work. I don't have enough leverage to bend a 7-inch run of 16-gauge steel. And when I tried putting something on to add leverage, like a wrench or a pipe wrench, uh, it started bending the lip of the metal here. So I'm going to try a different tack. What I'm going to do is take this piece of angle iron I got a loop of chain here. I will clamp it to the edge of the metal up here and then put a bar through this loop of chain to give me some leverage. So on with the clamp. the leverage I need. I think so. Yes, it is bending. It is bending nicely. The purpose of hitting it with the mallet is to try and get the bend mostly on the crease and not back here. Now that sprawing that happened is because the crowbar came off the jaw of the vise and actually went against the, uh, the back of the piece of metal. So I'm moving the tip of the crowbar down. I'm just going to try using a hammer to finish off this bend. But a steel hammer, not a rubber hammer. I do have this flat faced hammer, which might do what I need. It's a little small. Oh, 
I see now that my clamping in the vise is insufficient. And you see there the way the angle irons have twisted. The piece of metal is not being clamped effectively. Okay, I replaced it in my clamping angles and I used the big ugly hammer to flatten down the fold. So I got a fairly good fold now. I might be getting cracking on the, on the fold. That's not good. Yeah, I just had a close look and the fold is cracking on the outside edge. I don't know if you can see it from the camera focus. Along here, there's all this cracked metal. Well, I have to live with the cracking I have on that first fold. This fold here, I've got it folded this far. And what I'm going to do is take it out of the blocks and use a torch to anneal it again. It could be the sheet metal is probably already somewhat work hardened to start with, which might be why I'm having so much trouble bending it in the first place. Well, wow, that bent so much easier after annealing. I think I'm going to anneal all the bends ahead of time. Uh, annealing this whole fold with some heat worked so well, I'm going to anneal all the other fold lines now, except the propane torch was a bit slow. So I'm going to be using my oxyacetylene torch. So I got my bend lines all marked again because most of the heat had taken off the markings I had. So I have all, all the creases annealed now. I'm about to do this one. I've already done these two and it is a lot easier now that the metal has been annealed. I don't need any pull bar or anything. I just pull and get most of the crease formed. And I just use the hammer to get a sharper corner. Just have to make sure the vise is really tight because if I start pounding down on here the metal slides into the gap it's going to make the fold go weird. But that looks like it worked. As I said I have the vise really tight. There we go. And there's the fold. Now I just have to get this fourth one set up in the vise and folded. Uh, then I'll be done with all the lengthwise folds, and I have to do the crossways folds. They're going to be a little harder to do. The ones on the end I'll be able to do in the vise if I shorten this angle iron to fit in the space. These ones here are going to be even harder to form because they won't win the vise. It hits the vise screw here. I might be able to start the crease in my break, but these pieces are quite long, so they'll pop up and hit the frame of the brake. I have the teeth on my bender here set up so that these two together just span the width I want to bend. So leave sharp bends right into the corners and a gap in between that will be a bit of a soft bend. And I can put the piece after that in this tooth which will give a nice sharp bend in the middle but doesn't quite reach the ends. So that way I should be able to get a sharp bend all the way across. The other thing I'm going to do is measure how thick these teeth are. The fingers on the bender are almost exactly 3 16 of an inch thick. So the way I'm going to position this properly, because it's really hard to see where this line is once the, the, the bender is pressing against it, is I have a block clamped here, and I measure that space to be 3 32 of an inch, which is half of 3 16 and I just have to slide this whole thing into the bender until this block is against the face of the finger and apply a little pressure so it holds the metal steady and I can take the block and clamp off. So first I'm going to position this 
at the split fingers, which will do the bend out to the full width. And now I see my clamp is a little in the way here. So I'll move it back a bit. So I'm just gently holding it so the white block is against the face of the finger. Start applying the presser until I feel the thing grab the metal. I can take off the clamp, take out the block, and rather than killing myself flying force, I'll just have to use the pipe to lengthen this a bit and do the bend. That's bottomed out, so I open that all the way. I'll slide it over and put it under this anvil just to make sure the center gets bent properly as well. I'm just sort of feeling it for it to be in, in the in the anvils properly. Just give that a bit of a push. There. even bend. Better than the ones I did with the hammer in the vise. And here's the front section of the box. I actually had to cut my positioning guide in half so it fit in this area. There. But other than that, everything went okay. The bends came out nice and accurately. There's only one bend that I'm worried about. And that is... This one right here, there's supposed to be enough of a gap there for the 16 gauge metal to fit in. I might either have to try and press in some metal to spread that a bit, or trim the back corner a bit so it doesn't go as, uh, trim the corner of the back piece a bit, I should say, so it doesn't quite go in there the full depth. But other than that, I've got everything nicely squared up. It looks horrible because of all the heat treatment, but other than that, it came out beautiful. With front finish, now I'm working on the back. I have it marked out, ready to make the first cut along here. Metal's clamped to the workbench, and then I'm going to be doing the cut over the gap in the woodworking device here. And as with the previous piece, I have to file down to the line because the cut with the saw was not accurate. I made sure I stayed outside the line when using the saw. This is on the line right here. That's close to the line. This gets a little further away there and there. And on the line again at the end. I've got the end here filed to the cut line and smoothed over a bit, but I'm not going to file this edge until I have it folded and fitted to the box. So now I've marked where the folds are going to be roughly, and I'm going to anneal those again with the torch. And once it cools off, I can make those bends. I anneal the spots where I want the folds now, and then I've polished off the scale and remarked my fold lines. I had to do a bit of hammer work to flatten things out because they warped a bit from the annealing. And I used a bit of a too hard hammer on too soft a surface. There's a few little dings here. I'll have to see how badly they show once things are painted. I might have to use a little filler putty or a tiny bit of grinding to get off bumps. We'll see once it's primed. 
just like the last time I'm clamping on a block 330 seconds an inch back from my bend line to act as a guide when I put it in the bender. ripped metal so I can take off my guide. And do the bend. Sounds like a dance. Do the bend. This is the limit of what I can do with this bender. I do have an electrical outlet right near my right arm here, which makes it hard to apply as much force as I would like to. It's not quite a 90 degree bend, but I can finish it off just by manually forcing the bend. I've got the back of the box bent, but I've got this little problem extracting it from the bend. What I'm going to have to do is take off this upper roller. I take out this screw, this pin comes out, and this roller comes out, and I should be able to get that out. This is a hazard for certain box sizes on this type of bender. Ta -da! So it looks like I don't actually have to take this pin out. It's got a flat spot on the side of it. Ugh. It's got a flat spot here, so I should just be able to turn it a quarter turn and have it come out. You can see how stringy this oil is that I've got here. This is actually whey oil, because that's what's in the oil can. thing back in the way this is now. And I can. And I just turn this out. There. I don't take this thing out very often, so I don't know the easy way to do it. And tighten that. There we go. I'll break back together. There. 
everything's ready to go now. I got this out. So I just have to adjust those bends a bit and try putting it all together. I might have to shorten one of these edges too. I've got the box temporarily assembled here with some clamps holding it together. I've got the two sides lined up nicely here. I want this piece inset just a bit from this. And now I've gotten ready to mark up here. And you can see the little mark. That's where I plan to trim this edge. And this edge has never been trimmed. That's just the rough saw cut. So it's a little bit wavy. And now I've flipped it over. This is the other side. So again I have this piece just set in a, this piece just set in a bit from this piece. And I have this marked up, and I haven't done a mark there, but I will do a mark, just set in a tiny bit again. And I'll take off the back and see if what happens if I draw, use a square to draw this line, where it ends up here, and add this back corner. And if all it looks like it's coming, taking off about a consistent amount of material, then I'll just mark that line all the way around and file it down and smooth it down. And then use this abrasive pad to sort of round over the edges so everything's nice and smooth. And then the next job will be to uh, drill all the holes to hold it together. Uh, before I take this apart though, I'm going to mark top and bottom just in case there is some asymmetry so I don't put, try and put this on the other way the other way this way and then have it mysteriously just not want to fit at all. One other adjustment to make, uh, this back was actually cut a wee bit long I measured this distance and this distance to make the fold. So any length errors in this piece, this leg, and it's actually showing up, there's a bit of a gap there, maybe a millimeter or so, or a sixteenth of an inch, something in that ballpark. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, trimming this edge by about that amount so that this piece, so that this piece here will close up properly and this gap will go away. Uh, there's no corresponding gap at the bottom, that's just a variation in all the bending operations. But it's not really a problem if this back is a little bit short because there's plenty of overlap here. Now, this is a nice fit, so what I'm probably going to do is put two screws here in the bottom back, one screw up here, and that way I won't have to rely on the labeling anymore to avoid flipping it over. And probably one screw on each side here and here or thereabouts. There's enough metal to trim off that I carefully used an angle grinder and then just finished off with the file. So I have the box put together again and everything fits up nicely. I'm getting ready to put some of the screws in. I'm going to have one on either side of the front here and two here joining the back to the bottom because that's the part that's going to be holding the weight. This thing's going to be supported by the bottom and one up here and that way once these screws in I can lose my A B markings which tell me what direction to put things together in and one more screw here so I'm going to be using some number 832 by quarter inch screws I was thinking of using pan head screws with slots but I have these and even though the slot head screws would really match the look of the old machine Robertson head screws are the way to go here I've got the two screws at either side of the front set in already, and then I have punch marks for the three screws that will hold the back. I'm just getting ready to drill, to drill that. I'm doing this first with tap size. One thing is this box does have a little twist to its shape, so it's a little weebly wobbly here. tap size drill. Now I'm going to drill again with the clearance drill and just drill through the upper layer.
I'm just going to drill this very slowly just to make sure I don't go through the second layer of steel. snug and I just slack off the belts on the drill press. And I can turn the tap by hand. And pull it out again. Now I'll put in the screw and that way the second screw hole will be aligned match this one. There's only about two threads of engagement in the sheet metal because the sheet metal is about a sixteenth of an inch thick and this is 32 pitch thread. So you don't want to go crazy tightening the screws. All it's got to do is keep the box from falling apart when you're using it. Go back to the tapping drill and I'll do the next hole. I'm going to cut all the openings and drill all the holes in this box before I paint it. That way I don't have to worry about the paint getting damaged while I'm making the holes. This is the bottom of the box. I have a central hole here which will hold a conduit fitting. That will actually be what supports the box. There will be a grommet here for the wire coming from the thermocouple and the uh, psycho counter. These two holes will hold sort of a strain relief clamp on the inside for these wires. And I'll put the fuse holder here on the bottom. So I'm drilling the first with an eighth inch drill just to get things started. Uh, I already punched, put in punch marks to locate the holes. I was using an eighth inch drill here. These holes are actually number 19, so I was just going to drill them directly with the correct drill size. Number 19 is the tapping size for 832 screws. Uh, I had to slow down the drill press as well because of the larger drill size. And now I have to switch to the final drill size for the bigger holes. Careful it didn't grab with that big drill. This other hole size is 13 30 seconds. That's uh, 1 30 seconds bigger than 3 quarters. So I think that one I actually do have to clamp the box down so that it doesn't move. The biggest drill I have is a quarter, uh, 3 quarters of an inch. Now I said 13 30 seconds I think for this hole is 13 16 of an inch which is 1 16th bigger than the drill. So I'm going to drill the hole and then just use a file to enlarge it a bit. Uh, I have the work clamped between a couple of wood blocks here. I have a wood block here and here to keep the thing from turning this time because otherwise there's going to be an awful lot of torque from this drill and I'll try and grab it out of my hands. So here goes. So 
that's all the holes in the bottom done. I just have to enlarge this one of the file and deburr the other holes. Now, here's the holes in the bottom, all drilled, deburred. I filed this one big enough for the fitting that goes into it. I think I might have said these were tapping size for 832. They're not. They're a clearance size for 832, which is a number 19 drill. Uh, these will thread into a, a metal plate inside, and that'll just be used to clamp down the wires that come through this grommet so they can't get yanked out. Now, the next trick will be to drill out all the holes on the front. There's only two holes that have to be accurate placed. Uh, the other ones are just starter holes for cutting out two big rectangles. I'm skipping one hole here. This is a little hole that holds the indexing pin for the switch. I want to get the switch hole drilled first before I put that in just to make sure you get it at uh, just the right place. I've got one of the cutouts at least roughly done here. It has to be enlarged a tiny bit before the part with the counter will fit in here. I'm going to cut the second hole now. This is, a, this is clamped in my woodworking vise so it's nice and sturdy but it's a terrible position for filing so I'm going to have to pull this out and Put it in the in the uh, vice some other way to do the filing, but this is great for doing cutting. It's really solid. And everything else gets done with a file. I've got four files here to do the work with. I have a square file that I'll use just to get most of the way into the corners. A small fine triangular file which I use to get the corners nice and sharp. And this is a safe edge file. There's no uh, teeth on these edges. So I can use that to work in a corner without worrying about digging sideways into the side of the corner if I just want to cut this way and not this way for instance and then for the bulk of the filing this big coarse file And so on. I'm wearing here in protection just because the sound is so horrible, not so much that it's loud. After lots of filing, all the parts fit now. So after cleaning off all the marking fluid, I'll give this a coat of primer. Let's see how it looks. And here's the box primed. I have to. I had to do a second coat of primer on it. The first coat and it got some dirt in it. Uh, I guess the spray blast sort of kicked up some dirt off the surface I was working on. So I sanded that down a bit and then gave it a second coat of primer. And now it's time for the finish coat. And here's the box all painted. It's not a perfect paint job. There are a couple of spots where I got the paint too heavy and it ran a bit. And at least one more spot where I didn't have quite enough paint so it has a 
sort of a speckly finish instead of being nice and smooth. Let's see. Here's one of the runs. I don't know if you guys can see that at all. Oh, there, there it is there. A bit. And there's a run there on the top of the box where it's visible for everyone to see. And this is the back of the top again. If I can catch a reflection, you can see it's just a little bit stippled because the paint didn't, the coat didn't fully cover it. However, there's other flaws in here that I can't eliminate. You can see, you can sort of see where there's hammer marks making little tiny dents. That's, I'm not going to fix that. This is good enough for what it's going to be used for. And I'm sure when I put the box together, it's going to scrape some paint off this edge a bit. But I'm going to call that done and I can get on back with the original project that this was intended for.